Spent by the pool. Everything okay, guys? Everything okay, boss. Intruder alert in Mr. Tufter's quarters. You take this level, I'll take the top. Mr. Tufter is not in the daylight room. Anyone got a video? Joe, Barry, lock down the perimeter. Gino, check the car park. Jamila, they found him. Mr. Doctor? Is he okay? I think so. How did he get here? He says he woke up, didn't know where he was. He must have triggered the alarm himself. Ready, can we stand down? Yeah, okay. You good? Yeah, we're fine. out that way. She'll invite us over. I'll get him You've to drive. You've all through, haven't you? Someone had to. You're going through with this, aren't you, Brandon? Of course. My brother won't stop till you give him what he wants. You should go to Halit. He'll look out for you. He's your father. They want you to kill Atif, and they won't stop hurting me until you do. Bathurst's an old school Mandarin. Whatever he's got to tell us, he didn't trust a secure line. I'll let you do the talking, sir. Probably best, Martha. Martha Lawson. How do you do? Hello. What do you know about Banzi Dutta? That he's very rich. I'm very secretive. That's Banzi Dutta's dentist. He was referred to my office a couple of days ago. At first, my PA thought he was raving. But I think you should hear what he's got to say. Mr. Dutta suffers from throat cancer. He has undergone a partial laryngectomy. Meaning? He's had most of his voice box removed. He's also had radiation therapy, which has caused some damage to the teeth. Last week, I went to Bansi Dutta's residence for a routine appointment. As soon as I examined his mouth, I saw that something was wrong. These were not the teeth of a man in radiation therapy. In fact, they were not Bansi Dutta's teeth at all. You sure? Look, I checked our records. Whoever that man is, he is not Bouncy Dutta. He may look like him, but he is not him. Goodbye. Could you? Well, I can look into it, ask a few questions, but without a DNA test. No. You've heard of Myrex Motors? Just gone bust, haven't they? Not quite. But they will if they can't find a buyer. And Bouncy Dutta's interested. Myrex Motors keeps about 5,000 people employed in the West Midlands. My minister would like it to stay that way. So we're offering Mr. Dutter an easy ride. Tax breaks, loan guarantees, and a substantial sum up front. As a sweetener. As a gesture of confidence. My minister feels this is one we can't afford to lose. 
So you can see our problem. We can't say, hang on a minute, we're not convinced you are Banzi Dutta, so we want to take a DNA swab just to be sure. That would cause all sorts of offence. Well, if he's the real thing, you mean? Well, if he's not the real thing. Then we're going to look like gullible fools. Fools who've just given away 50 million pounds to an imposter. So you need someone to check out Banzi Dutta's identity discreetly. So how's it going, this new department of yours? Hugh tells me it's quite something. Well, we're learning as we go. What do you think? Could you lend us a hand? Why, well, yes, sir. I'm sure we could. He doesn't look very happy for someone who's rolling in it. He's had cancer for almost as long as he's had money, and that is our problem. Bansi Dutter, or the man who's taken his place, is paranoid about infection. Everything he touches has to be sterilised before he uses it and destroyed afterwards. Getting a DNA sample without him knowing is going to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, you're in faecal matter? Oh, please. Just putting it out there. Everything is controlled, monitored. His bedroom is like a personal intensive care unit in the middle of Fort Knox. So who does have contacts with him? Wow. Who's she? Miss India? Jamila Segar, his personal medical attendant. She's employed for her nursing talents, not her looks, although her duties do appear to be wide-ranging. Well, lucky Mr. Dutta. This financial rescue of Mirex Motors, does Bansi do the deal himself? In person. And they're having meetings to work out the details? At his house. Bansi doesn't like to travel. What about security? I mean, on our side. Senior civil servants must be involved, a minister, whatever. I'm sure the diplomatic protection group give the place the once over. So, why doesn't one of us take the job? He could sweep the place for bugs and bombs and maybe get close enough to Banzi to nick his hairbrush? Or his bedpan? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Let me think about it. Give it to Anthony. No. It's his idea. You're the one with the undercover experience. You gotta give him a chance sometime. How else is he gonna learn? Since when were you so concerned about Anthony's career? Good. I uh, keep getting these emails, by the way, from Deptford Prison. The head guard has convinced he's seen you there under another name. You know anything about that? Must be a mistake. That's what I told him. I'll tell him again. So, you okay about this? Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. Remember to check his RD, OK? You're with the DPG, right? That's right. What's that stand for? Don't point guns? We supply protection for diplomats, ministers, that kind of thing. Carry a weapon? When it's called for. Glock 18. Fully automatic. Cut the man in half. None of your taser shit here, my friend. Nice. I hear you had a security scare the other night. It was nothing, man. The sensor on this window tripped. False alarm. Mr. Dutta went walkabout without telling anyone. I thought Bansi would have some more pleasure, you know? Paintings, antiques. The place looks like you just moved in. This place wasn't my idea. It was Jamila's call. Yeah, you know, on my way. Check in the house. Some government officials are coming here. We need to make sure that they feel safe. We hope that you'll respect our home. Mr. Dutta is most insistent on that. Is it just me, or does anybody else find this weird? What's weird? Well, that our government is doing business with a guy like Bansi Dutta. I mean, I suppose they do know how he made his money. Look at this, right? He's born in the Mumbai slums. Bit of thieving, bit of rough stuff, you'd expect that. But he's a hitman at 12. And by the time he's in his <laughs> teens, he's graduated to drug smuggling, running prostitutes, racketeering. He must have made a lot of enemies on the way. Yeah, and some of them even managed to survive. I mean, if you cross him, you're dead. It's that simple. Just the guy to save the British motor industry. I'm surprised at you, Tessa, taking notice of internet gossip. Well, it's how I earn my living, remember? 
Yeah, but we're here to find out who'd have a motive to impersonate Bansi Dutta, not to pass judgment on him. Set the system, guys. Checking security. In Mr. Data's private quarters. How did you get in? That door was open. Impossible. It locks automatically. No, it's an electronic lock connected to the operations room. If there's an alert, they shut the entire system down, disabling the door. You know, it's a good job that was just a false alarm you had the other night. Excuse me. I'm not backing out a deal. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, I'll meet you there. Just keep driving. Do as I say. Keep your eyes on the road. What's this about? I never do nothing. You went to the police. So I was in prison because of you. No, well, who told you that? On your I knees. never do. No, please. Please don't do this. I have a daughter. She's beautiful. She loves me. Who's gonna look after her? You ever show your face around her again, you're dead! Shut up! Go! Oh, 
Not as tough as you look. Are you, Brendan? This is Derek Smallwood, Deptford Prison. I'm ringing because my emails don't seem to have any effect. Let's get this straight. I'm not mistaken about D.I. Bloom's visit. He came here under a false name, and I have photographic evidence to prove it. If you don't address this, then I shall go over your head. OK? Thank you. Where will you bury him? I can't. Until your brother's people see him first, they're gonna want proof he's dead. He deserved to die. He betrayed us. I love you. Any luck with Bansu's DNA? No. We're running out of time. He's moved the next meeting forward. There are cars full of men in suits on their way to you as we speak. I'm sending Anthony as backup. Take those. Ah, oh, it's okay. I'm coming right back. Sorry. Regulations. No problem. Mini cabbing on the side, are we? That's fine, sir. You know, follow me. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'll just need to take a look inside that. It's already been searched. Uh, it's just routine, sir. One second, man. Can you open it for me, please? and he just sent this photo from the house. I've done a little work on our friend, Mr. Dutter, that might provide valuable background to the case. OK, this is the big one. Bansy's masterpiece before reinventing himself as a straight businessman. The Badge Pie Chemical Works, 1997. 218 people killed, and they were the lucky ones. I mean, nothing was ever proved, of course, but the scenario is this. Bansy's running a protection racket. Local industrialists won't pay up. Bansy blows up his factory. The factory specialised in producing sulfuric acid in high concentrations. The blast itself was fairly small. The damage wasn't. What became of these people? They're still awaiting compensation. I'm not putting you off, am I? Just doing our job, right? change some things about a face, like the colour of the skin or the shape of individual features, but the one thing you cannot change is bone structure. Mm. So if this Bansy is an imposter, what's happened to him? Or well, what's left of him. 
Well, security's pretty tight. It'll be tough getting him out of the building, alive or dead. So he could still be in there? Let's reconvene in half an hour. Could you clear these cups away? Did you have a pleasant evening with your girlfriend? It must have been quite a night. You seem a little disheveled this morning. Do I? Sorry. Is that blood on your shirt? Don't you ever answer your phone? I'm with the DPG, remember? We don't take calls on duty. Tessa needs to talk to you. Yeah, I did some work on the badge pie survivors. Mm -hmm. Someone had to. Went over there in about 98. I was young and idealistic then. And it made a change from belly tucks and faceless. You reconstructed the faces. What was left of them? I tried to give them back something their families could bear to look at. Luckily, it's not a society that sets quite as much store by appearance as ours. Um... OK, well, this man's definitely had reconstructive surgery. See the residual scarring on the hairline? Muscle contraction at the size of the mouth, too. It's a nice job, though. Like the badge pie victims? <laughs> Those people couldn't afford this sort of work. There's only a couple of places in the world that could do something like this. One's in Los Angeles, the other's in Chicago. Chicago. But you can't say who precisely. Surgeons aren't in the habit of signing their work. Right. But I can tell you one thing. That guy's wearing tinted contact lenses. What? Hi, Bloom. It's your favourite girl. Listen, there's been a bit of mission creep. It looks like the Banshee you're with is a fake, which makes us wonder what's happened to the real one, and we think he might still be on the premises, possibly in the basement. Banshee's house has a pretty shady past. It seems it's not just people that change their identity, but buildings as well. During the Second World War, it was a secret interrogation center run by Allied military intelligence. Not even the Red Cross knew about it. There were rumors that suspected German agents were imprisoned and tortured there. I've been looking at the estate agent's prospectus and comparing it with the ground plan that I pinched from the archives, and the two don't match. What am I looking for, Tessa? Trap doors, bookcases that move. Where exactly are you now? In the basement. Some kind of stone passageway just passed. Some like a kitchen on my left. OK, well, go further down that passage. There should be, um, like a storeroom there or something. Yeah. Now look to your right. What do you see directly in front of you? It looks like the kind of thing my mother used to hang cups on. Right, is there anything behind it? I don't know. Oh. Hold on. What should I say if anyone catches me? Just tell them the voices made you do it. OK, well, yeah, there's a door. Looks like some kind of wine cellar that time forgot. No, that's good, that's good. Go through the wine cellar, and then you should come to some stairs leading down to a lower level. Yeah, I found those stairs. Leads to some kind of vaulted chamber. It's dark and creepy, but I don't think there's anyone been down here for a while. I'll take that back.
Okay. This looks a bit more promising. Bloom? Tessa. Hello. Shit, we've lost him. they'd send someone. As soon as I saw the look on that dentist's face. But you won't stop us. Us? I saw what's in the boot of your car. Is that normal behavior for policemen in this country? No. It's not normal behavior. Who is he? Don't you have any shame? Why am I even asking? You'll only lie. Okay, I don't care what dirty little game you're up to, but somebody will. You're going to help us. What if I don't? These go to your superiors. What about your dirty little game? It doesn't concern you. In 24 hours, we'll be gone. With 50 million pounds in government money? You know what to do with this, I presume? It is what you came for, isn't it? What your boss at Scotland Yard is expecting. This is John Bloom. I'm not here, Luke. This is John Bloom. I'm not here. This is John Bloom. I'm not here. Leave a message and I'll call you back. It's a black spot. This is John Bloom. He did I'm say he was going down into a cellar. Back. It's been too long. Well, maybe he's found something. I'm going to send Anthony in after him. Are you sure? Liam knows what he's doing. I have to do this, sorry. Are you just going to leave him in there? What do you care? He needs medical attention. He could die. Then we'll put him in the boot of your car. If there's room. How'd you get it? Don't ask. What are you doing? A job. And what's that? Checking security. That's broken. Oh. That's what we do in the DPG. Wow. You're taking your cover pretty seriously. Wasn't expecting to see you here today. No, we lost contact. I was worried. So, did you find anything? You know, you've been acting kind of oddly lately. Nothing's the matter, is it? You know, sometimes I think I rely on you too much. I forget what you've been through. I mean, you never talk about it. 
You see what I mean? Sorry. I've never been undercover. I, uh, I hear it's hard coming back. No more adrenaline. A feeling of betrayal you can't quite kick. Loose ends that won't tie. Maybe I could help. Help? We look after our own in the police. What happens undercover stays undercover. And if it won't, then we fix it. And nobody need ever know. But what we don't do is lie to each other. I won't let you down. Don't worry. They've all got brown eyes. Yeah, any other colour would be an extremely rare mutation. It's the one thing you can't change. That's why he's wearing contact lenses. What are you doing? Trying to find one of the Bouncy Dust's victims who doesn't have brown eyes. No. 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 What about him? Sadiq Khalil, also known as the Blue-Eyed Angel, on account of how he wasn't. But he's one of Banzi's men, not one of his victims. Okay, Mr. Dutta, I've got to get you out of here. About. I haven't much time. You run the Badge by Survivors campaign, is that right? I don't run it, I'm their lawyer. It's their campaign. Uh -huh. Do you know this man? Sadiq Khalil is, or was, a very bad man. A childhood friend of Bansi Dutta's and his partner in crime. He was Bansi's enforcer? Beatings, killings, the odd mutilation. He did whatever Bansi wanted, and he was loyal. Bansi left the country treatment for throat cancer. Sadiq was put in charge. He could have made a bid for power himself, but when Bansi returned, Sadiq handed everything right back. How do you know all this? When the Indian economy started to take off, Bansi reinvented himself as a businessman, distanced himself from men like Sadiq. And when would that be? Around 97. About the time of the Bajpai explosion? That's right. It's very good. Thank you so much, sir. We look forward to signing the contract. It's all right, I can manage now. You're sure? Mr. Dutta would like to be alone. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, so what have we got? We've got two faces that don't match. Clear indications that Bansi Dutt has been replaced by a lookalike. No body, though, and no DNA result from Bloom's swab. Well, not yet. A possible ID on the possible perpetrator, Sadiq Khalil, former criminal associate of Bansi Dutta. What's his motive, though? Uh, agreed. It's a classic con. He pretends to be interested in investing in Mirix Motors. The British government jump at the chance, thinking they're going to save some jobs. Oh, including their own. They stump up seed money as a sweetener. Bansi pretends to be hard to convince, but in the end he agrees. Give me your millions and I'll give you my hundreds of millions. But as soon as the government money comes through... Bang. No Bansi Dutta. He just disappears. Or maybe the real Bansi Dutta is discovered floating in the canal. He took his own life, depressed about his cancer. Mm. I don't know. The plastic surgery just feels wrong to me. It'd have to be more than just greed. But we're not making a case. We're seeing if there's enough doubt to stop the minister signing the agreement. And I think we've done that. OK, when I say go, push all your weight against the door. All right, ready? Go.
Take a good look, Bansi Tata. Look at your own face. Ugly, isn't it? Who are you? I'm a dead man, Bansi. I died on the 22nd of July, 1997. Don't you remember? It was a routine job. The kind of thing I'd done for you many times before. Enforcing your law, exacting your punishment. It's a dick. The idea was to wreck the factory, not to take lives. The timer was set to go off after the factory had closed for the day. But somebody had interfered with the mechanism. Hadn't you, Bansi? <laughs> Why did you do that? Because you wanted to be rid of me. To forget all the beatings and killings I carried out for you. To start again. could bear to come near me. No one. Except my sister. Arthur, come in. So we've examined every angle in the Bansi Dutta case. Yes, so... I've just had the DNA report. Good work. Sir? Well, that dentist fellow was talking out of his ass. What do the results say? Not the Bansi Dutta is who he says he is. We've nothing to worry about. Getting the DNA swab proved it. Was it D.I. Bloom who did the business? Yes, it was, sir. Quite a find, that man. Should hang on to him. I'll try. Bit of a loose cannon, though. Had some chap from Deford Prison bending my ear about how he's been visiting inmates under another name. I'm aware of that. I don't want to know. Do things your own way. Results are what count. I had nothing except the money I had stolen, so... I used it to buy myself a new face. To make me look like a human being again. It took almost a year. I had time to think. To suffer. I thought I was my face. But I was wrong. The explosion had simply revealed the monster I was. The DNA from Bloom's swab matches the DNA held by Bansi's doctor. But it can't. End of story. So what are we going to do? Nothing. There is an alternative you haven't considered. Yeah. Or maybe you have. That they're both right. That the Bansi who's about to sign that agreement is a fake, and that the DNA Bloom supplied is genuine. What are you saying? That Bloom deliberately misled us? It wouldn't have to be deliberate. Oh, I think it would. Why would he do that? I don't know, but there's a lot about DI Bloom we don't understand. I trust John Bloom. Well, that's okay then. But you'd better be right. I decided to start again too. To find justice for the innocent victims I had helped destroy. Even if to do that, I had to turn myself into another monster. Why didn't you kill me? I wanted to. Jamila wouldn't let me. You didn't need to. 
All you had to do was take his place, and you could use his identity to steal 50 million. Not for myself. Don't you see? It's justice, not theft. A chance to put right the damage this man had done. You're wasting your time, Sadiq. He wouldn't understand. I'm not saying I don't sympathize, but I can't let this go on. Come on, Mr. Dillon. What are you doing? I'm getting him out of here. You know what will happen if you do. Yeah. You'll go to jail. And if that's the way it's got to be. We haven't come all this way to fail now. OK, let's go. We have to stop the minister signing that agreement. Before the signing, I wish to make an announcement on another matter. It concerns the unfortunate explosion at the Bajpai Chemical Works in 1997. I have decided out of common humanity to give some comfort to its innocent victims. I am therefore endowing a charitable institution with 50 million pounds. to provide medical care and compensation to the sufferers. Let us proceed with the signing of the Merex Motors Agreement. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> DSI Lawson, who's played an important role in all this. Congratulations. How do you do? Yeah, she's been a great help. Thank you, sir. Excellent results as well. I think so. Yes. I'm glad my team has been useful. Let me introduce you to them. Mr. Dutch, we're so pleased with you. I hope this will improve the relationship. This is DS Waring, another key member of the team. Hello. <laughs> Have I misjudged you? If I said yeah, would you believe me? Are you a good man? I try to be. Then you've got a big problem. <laughs> 